can I just say, yes. um, I think it's interesting that you have this approach now. I came across a video of you where you was talking about um, interracial marriage in such a degrading and denigrating manner. But they were pointing at each other, yeah? And the song goes something like, brack off your back, brack off your back. Probably okay, so right. this is for yeah. all of the Somali community. Um, I've let them know that I was coming on and yes. they wanted to know and yes. they believe that you yes. have something against the Somali community, in yes. particular, the Somali women. So okay. can you answer this, Ali? Because yeah. this is literally what they want to know. Uh, it's called the Tadoba. Okay. So this is the seven day period where the woman and the husband, they don't leave their home. So the food is brought to them. They don't oh, do anything. Wow. So this is the honeymoon period. Traditionally. Traditionally speaking. Mm. People have this mentality today. If my wedding is not trending on social media, I didn't have a wedding. Promise her the world, lie to her, lie to her. And then yeah. when you actually get married to her and you've got her, now present your truth. When it comes to Somali weddings, yeah? <laughs> Inappropriate clothing style, free mixing. I mean, it's like you are attending a nightclub or a music festival. I think as much as we're lenient with divorce in comparison to other communities, we also frown upon it as well. There are people that are still very, very strong mm. in, in their qabil and they were like, we're not going to marry this qabil, we're not going to marry that qabil. Why? So are they, like they think they're inferior. They if a woman is not sexually satisfied, she has a right to divorce. Be patient on your husband, you know, regardless of what he does. That same mm. level of um, sort of advice. It's not given to the men. It's not really given to the men. And we talked about this, isn't it? So guys, if you are somebody who trains like me when I'm doing boxing, when I'm jogging, when I'm doing bodybuilding, this can benefit you. It's Shilajit from Nature's Blends. As you guys know, I get my honey, my black seed oil, and many other supplements from them. It has 86 plus minerals, including zinc, magnesium, selenium, fulvic acid, 59%, fully lab tested, the highest in the market. Boost testosterone levels, boost energy levels, and safe for men and women. So check out Nature's Blends in the description box and enjoy it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters and dear friends Inshallah, hope you guys are well uh, Before I start, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The most merciful, the most just All praises, glory and gratitude belong to Him um, And welcome to the Bitter Truth Show As you guys can see We are here talking uh, on a variety of topics But the team came with an idea We thought, you know what? Why don't we do a cultural one? Where, and I thought it would be very intriguing Because I want to know about different cultures So we thought, you know, why don't we do you know, And we did a poll So we said, um, Bengalis, Jamaicans, Somalis and Moroccans so number one, number one was Moroccans, then it was Bengalis, and then it was Somalis. And then lastly, I think it was Jamaicans. But then what happened is the Bengalis uh, didn't really apply that much. So then we thought we'll go to Somalis. So we're here today um, and some Moroccans uh, cancelled. We was going to have a Moroccan ep episode, but it got cancelled because uh, people say they turn up and they don't turn up. Uh, but it's fine because from now on I'll be implementing 50 pound deposits, which means uh, you'll be paying 50 pounds. And if you come on the day, I'll be giving you your money back. If not, uh, inshallah, we'll be uh, giving it to Sadaqah. So, um, in a nutshell, today's episode, I'm really excited because um, the community, for example, it's, we're going to be talking about the Somali culture. I want to know everything about the Somali culture, okay? Uh, because there's a lot of, like, for example, my Quran teachers, they're Somali, a lot of my brothers that I know are Somali, alhamdulillah. So, in a nutshell, as you guys know the rules, so there's the bitter buzzers. I don't think this is an episode where we're going to debate. I don't think there's going to be a debate. I don't think so. It's just going to be a topic where we will just be talking. But if you disagree with whoever it may be, you press the buzzer and you have one and a half minute, nobody can interrupt you, and you'll have your say. So the first question is, basically, in a nutshell, because we want to know about your culture. So we've got our brothers, Brother Mohammed came all the way from Sweden. How you doing? May Allah bless you, inshallah. Barakallah uh, feek. You're from the UK? Oh, yeah. Assalamu May Allah bless you, inshallah. And our honorable sisters uh, who live in the UK, right? Both of yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. May Allah bless you guys, inshallah, our sisters for coming. So let me just open the discussion. The first thing that I would personally, we as the team would want to know, and we're asking the same questions to every culture, by the way. It's nothing, you know, every culture is getting the same questions. When it comes to seeking marriage in the Somali community, how does it work? For example, does the parents say, you know, find someone suitable? Do they get involved? Please just give me the gist. I just want to know from the Somali culture, I don't know who should we start with, the sisters or the, come on, let's, okay, we'll start with the champ, inshallah. Okay, tell us, when it comes to the Somali community, the first question to you guys, how do you guys go about finding someone in your culture? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
All right, buckle up. Let's break it down. How does the Somali marriage work? When a Somali boy meets a Somali girl, yeah, and the sparks fly, it's time for some serious matchmaking action, yeah? The families, they step in like referees, negotiating dowry, financial agreements, like this is a World Cup final. Once the deal is sealed, yeah, and it's time for the big day, yeah? Picture this, a vibrant Somali wedding. Cultural dancing, wild, epic, music, I mean, food, drinks everywhere. That's it, yeah? Okay, all right. So that was, that was, I was gonna say that was a very good start. Was, you brought life to the studio, alhamdulillah. So just rewinding a bit, how, for example, if you are looking to seek marriage, where does the parents get involved? How is the initiating process? Like for example, like yourself, you're not married. Okay, if you was to, if you can bring the mic closer, inshallah. Aki. So if you was looking to get married, Aki, for you, would you be like, okay, if you're interested in a Somali sister, would you be, like, would you get your, does your, does your family find somebody? Because look, in the Asian culture, it's more like <clears throat> reference or I know somebody, my cousin, or you need to go marry the cousin that you know. Like, those things, you hear them. But in the Somali culture, is that the same thing? Um, I mean, personally, if, if I wanted to get married, I wouldn't, um, I'd probably go to my parents, if I'm being very honest. Because You like, would or you wouldn't? I would go to my parents. Okay. So I'll probably ask them for advice on who to pick. I've never done it before, so I can't really speak from experience, but in my family, I've, I come from a big family, so I've got like 10, 10 siblings, so nine siblings all together with 10. Um, so it's very, like some of my brothers and sisters got married through arranged marriages, so through my parents, and then some of them just found spouses themselves. Okay, in, in, in the Somali culture, is it is it like, does, fa does the parents say, listen, we will arrange this for you, or do they give you that, for example, argument say, you go to a family gathering, do they say, okay, you know what, actually, you know that, girl or that boy does, does that happen i just like culturally like we're, I, feel, we're, I feel like it doesn't like it's okay. not like um in comparison to perhaps the asian community mm. where it's really big on arranged marriage yes i think with the somali community we're very we're not as strict so it's not frowned upon if a girl brings um a, a man and says mom dad i met this guy this is who i want to marry they do a background check and vice versa if the boy does it. So it's not really um, strict, like, some, strict yeah. like that. We're very, yeah. we're very flexible. Yeah. I mean, I the only time, yeah, I think we are quite strict in is in, in relation to tribalism, right? So say can for instance- Can you just bring a bit closer sister so they can- Yeah, yeah sorry, so yeah. say yeah. for instance, um, this doesn't really happen as often in the West, but it, it happens a lot back home, mm. where say for instance, um, uh, you know, a sister may want to get married to a brother, and then the family may <clears throat> may not necessarily be too fond of him, mm. mainly because of the fact that he's from a different qabil, right? From a different mm -hmm. tribe. And because of that, they may instantly decline uh, his, uh, you know, him wanting to marry her. So. Tribe does come into play, but it doesn't happen as often. And that's the only part I think we're strict in for the most part. Okay, we're gonna to come to the interracial marriages. Good point, mashallah, good point. So uh, so from what I've got, just am I correct to say that today I have learned that when it comes to seeking marriage, the Somali community does not have like, okay, you know what, you need to marry your cousin or you need to marry this person or like the family, the parents are not very like, no, you're gonna marry who I say. It's more like, okay, um, it, Argument sake, bro, um, I've got your name. Mubarak. Yeah. Uh, Mubarak, Mubarak yeah? yeah? Mubarak, and I want to ask a question you guys as well. Mm. If you see a Somali sister and you're like, you know what, this sister looks marriage material, how would you initiate the process to your parents? Like, how would you go about it? Would you be like, you know what, um, let me speak to them, to speak to the family, to both of you guys? I don't know who wants to answer first. So do you mean like on the street or? No, how? I wouldn't, yeah, no, I was just, imagine you so go to you a wedding. So you found a girl yourself. Yeah, or How wedding. would you tell your parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or in a wedding. Would they, be, would they say no? What would they say? How would you go about uh, doing it? I would, yeah, I would try, basically what I would do is I would probably um, try and get hold of her father. So I wouldn't really, first I'll tell my parents I'll, what I'm, like what's happening basically, but mm -hmm. um, I would be more so just explain to them like that I found somebody suitable and then I'll tell them to I'll try and get hold of the father of the, the girl, piece. That's what I would do. Okay, mashallah, I like that. Mm -mm. I like that, alhamdulillah, keeping it <laughs> real 100. So yeah. imagine, sister, you argue and say a wedding, or imagine your mom's friend is dropped by her son, and you happen to see him. Yeah. And you're like, you know what, he seems like a good brother. Um, would you go to like, I think, Hoya? <laughs> would you go to Hoya or uh, is it Abu? No. Yeah, okay, yeah, Hoya, Abu, and would you come and say, you know what? I, I, I want, I'm interested in him. 
How would you initiate it? Like, do you... I don't think we really do that. No, I'll be honest with you. Girls don't really do that. They would probably not. Uh, okay. Yeah, they would not do that. They'll try and find maybe um, a f like somebody that will have background information about him. Like, okay. like, is he married? Is he not married? What's his background? But not really. It's not like it's not really normal for us to speak to our parents about guys that we like. And, okay. and it's really like mm. it's still very super conservative. OK, I see. Yeah. So so you would basically at what point would you go to the parents? So would you go like, for example, when sister? you're about to get married? <laughs> OK, so, so, yeah. so you're saying when like you're at like, the last bit. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. OK, so uh, the background checks, would it be done through like friends? Is it like, OK, you know what, that brother? <laughs> It was sisters, yeah. or is it like family connections? would do it? Family, yeah. uncles, um, the father, your dad. most of the times. Okay, one second. No, no, no. Before we go to the parents, so saw so a brother or a sister you're interested in. Would you get your cousin or your sister or your brother to to be like, okay, who is that brother? Yeah. Like, is it yeah. like that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sometimes that does occur. Yeah. So, say for instance, if they may know one another, or if if he may know of him, mm. it would be better to ask him. Oh, do you know anything about him? Do I need to be wary of this person, and so on and so forth. So, in that respect, yeah. Okay, perfect. Anything else you want to add, Afi? No, I agree with them. Okay, perfect. Second, wow. Second, second question. <laughs> second question. From a... Um, okay. Once a pers prospective spouse has been identified, how do the Somali culture that the, navigate the process from the initial encounter, from encounter of the day of wedding? So, in a nutshell, now you've found the person. He is the, or she is the one. Can you tell me, for example, how do you guys go about asking for the hand? What guys? What do you guys do? Like in 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 our Turkish Kurdish culture, it's mainly they you go with like you know bakhlavas. We're known for our bakhlavas, yeah. <laughs> you get the bakhlavas, and you're just like, okay, we're gonna go ask for the girl's hand. Yeah. And yeah. there's some cultural things where the girl puts like salt in your Turkish coffee if she doesn't like you or something like that. Yeah. Wow. Some mad stuff. Yeah, yeah. To show like if she's if it's extra sweet, it means I can't remember. But <laughs> in a nutshell. How do you guys go about it? From the initiating process um, to speaking to the family, how does asking the hand happen? And then we'll talk about the marriage, etc. Yeah. Yani, we follow is uh, Islamic beliefs, right? Yani nikah, the Islamic way, and uh, go. Yani ask the father for the hand, etc. Yani it's not something special. It's yani Islamic ways, okay. easy, nothing out of the order. So I would say, I need straight up nikah, father's hand, ask, ask the father, khalas. Okay. But it's, yeah. it's different. Uh, okay, so... Is it different? Can't. Okay, different. Can, I, can I hear it? I think it just depends. Um, are we talking from a traditional aspect? Or are we just talking like... Tradition. Like, let's, let's get to the traditions a bit. Like, like Islamically, we know I mean, that culturally, the... traditionally, for example, who goes to ask for the hand? Is it the mum and the dad? Is it, for example, do you go to like an entourage where it's like you've got the brothers and the uncles and you've got the mum and they go sit with it? Like, how does it work? Who goes there first? I want to know culturally. Is this, is this at the, just before the marriage or just when you're about no, to... No, no, no. This is, this is basically saying... You're not opening up. It's like, this is the person I'm interested in. You're going to, basically, either they're coming to ask for your hand. Well, that's the main way. So from your point of view, here we come to ask for the hand. For the brothers, they'll be going. So how so does the boys, the boys' family would normally come to the um, the, the woman's house. So that Just men or is it women? Every, every. Um, so it, it will be both, but they will be in separate rooms. Okay, good. So they'll um, be in separate rooms. But okay. initially, if we're just talking about, you know, letting the, the man sort of asking for the girl's hand in marriage, it will be him, his dad, if he's alive, his brother, like men that he really trusts in his family, his, his brother, his dad, his uncle, and uh, maybe a sheikh. Or is that too early? Uh, I don't know. I think it depends because um, traditionally speaking, yeah, yeah, you're right in that aspect. Uh, so typically speaking, the men, the, the male relatives come. So it's different in each region. So I'm talking about... So That's true. So for the South, right? Uh, for us people. What's the difference? I want to know between the South and the North. Like what's, yeah. what's the difference? So the North in... are like Somalilanders, basically. Okay, so yeah. what's, what's the, is there a big difference with the cultural aspect? Uh, little slight bit. differences. No. Slight differences. Yeah, slight, there are slight, slight differences. Bit. I mean, go on, slight, explain. I don't yeah. know what the difference. I don't I mean, think there is any difference. What, what do you? What, I don't okay, think. let's clarify. You're from the south, is that right? Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. from the north. Yeah. What do you do? What do you guys do when you when the man? Traditionally speaking, yeah. yeah. Typically speaking, so what, what happens is the male relatives um, go to the uh, woman's house, right? And uh, they basically, you know, introduce the boy. 
They talk about him in a good manner. They say this is what he does, so on, so on, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And if the father accepts the proposal, they pay something called surya, something like that. So it's basically like a small amount of money uh, to basically as, as, a, as, a, as a gratitude, as a form of gratitude. Oh, okay. Who pays this, sister? The the um, the the man. So the, or his the, father or his relatives. So so let me get this right. If he's interested in a sister, his father would pay the uh, the, the girl's father. Yeah, yeah. So the okay. girl, the girl is paid typically. So it's like a mm. as a form of gratitude. So not mahar. This is just a. It's not. This, this is before culture. the mahar. Yeah. Good. See, this is what I want to know. Okay. So culturally, this is what happens. So the his father, argument sake, will pay the girl's father yeah. as a form of gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, and is there a specific amount, or can it be? No, does it, can it have be to anything. be money? It can be. Any, it can be anything, really. It can be any gift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Carry on. And uh, yeah. So then, once the girl uh, accepts the you know the amount and the father uh, approves of the appro the proposal. Then we go ahead with the, the with the nikah, and then we go ahead with the uh, mahar, you know, to her choosing whatever she asks mm. for, and then we go ahead with the with the wedding, and then it's like a whole process. Traditionally speaking, mm. again, there's like a there's like a whole process. Um, the shasta. Let's 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 go. I want I want to know from the get go. Like okay, there's, there's a lot. To I'm not gonna I want I want I want to know everything because to me it's enlightening. So the the, the gift has been given. Yeah. The, the they have agreed that they're getting married. Does the nikah happen first? Is there a, like how many um, um, celebra celebrations do you have? Like how many um, stages? Like, yeah, yeah. like for example, I want to know, for example, uh, like I did hear that the girl wears different dresses. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I've heard, can you, I want to know, please go full out. I just want to know everything, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Please go. I just want to know. Come on, babe. <laughs> well, how does it go? I don't really. So um, again, it's different for each region, right? So what happens is, uh, so once nikah is, is being done, yeah. what happens is the father sometimes, uh, he may be there uh, in his daughter's absence. So for instance, he may be there, uh, you know, Spokesperson. Yes, as a spokesperson, as a yeah, as a spokesperson for his daughter, and then once everything, the process and everything, the procedure and everything goes well, then we go ahead with the wedding, and then the wedding takes place, and then the wedding it's a long process procedure. So, so there's the mahar first. Well, tell us what's, what's the long procedure. I want to know like. Yeah, the mahar, of course, uh, uh, you know, the, so the mahar happens. The mahar, is, the mahar is given, yeah, prior to the wedding, of course. Oh, okay. that's extra. Prior, prior to that's the wedding. Western. Can I just say that's Western? No, this that's is traditional. Really... This is tradition. What, the white dress? No, no, I'm not talking about the white dress. No, no, no. The, the mahar, yeah, it's given prior to the wedding. So it's the nikah happens. So the mahar is given before the nikah? Yeah. No, no, the nikah is done and then the mahar okay. is given. Okay, good. Okay. The mahar is given. Yeah. After that, what is the first celebration? Do, does, 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 is it like where this, the, the females come together and celebrate? Is it, what, what happens? Yeah, yeah. So we're quite conservative. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is the men are on one side and then the women are on the other side. So the women, typically speaking, they come in celebration, they dance. And, you know, we have something called Brambur, which is basically a celebration of poetry. Yeah, poetry and dancing and so on and so forth and then the men they just sit together they eat which is quite boring <laughs> really okay. don't really do much yeah. but you know the women uh, you know they basically celebrate and then the girl like you said earlier she um, changes you know three times the gantino the dira which is the traditional okay wait, wait, first... wait we need to break this down what's yeah. the first one called? so the first one um, it can be you know at any stage so the first one is the gantino what does that mean? Gantino is basically a traditional Somali attire, okay. so okay. which is something that Somali women are known for wearing. Okay. And then it could be the white dress, you know. Okay, so it can yeah. be. Okay. Or it can, the green dira. Yeah, it can be that, but yeah. So is. <laughs> <that? laughs> okay. And since this is the bitter yeah. truth show, yeah, I need to be honest, and I'm gonna sound a bit negative, yeah. All right. When it comes to Somali weddings, yeah, <laughs> especially in this day and age, I see a lot of fitna going on, yeah? What do I mean? Inappropriate clothing style, free mixing. I mean, it's like you are attending a nightclub or a music festival. It's all about capturing the moment, yeah? The latest TikTok trend and do the dances, etc. And I remember I saw this video a couple of months ago, yeah? scrolling saw this video where this Somali couple newly married yeah were dancing in the wedding I don't know what the name of the song is yeah but they were pointing at each other yeah and the song goes something like brack off your back brack off your back yeah and listen to me everybody yeah the aunties the elders everybody in the community was looking at them with this look of distaste yeah I mean, what's going on what's happening to our culture yeah they call it the bombastic side eye yeah so yeah, I mean, this is what's going on, yeah? 
So let's ask ourselves good questions. Where does this problem stems from? Yani, people have this mentality today. If my wedding is not trending on social media, I didn't have a wedding. So what you are doing now is you are compromising your Islamic beliefs just to have a big wedding. And yani, there is no barakah in this type of marriages. This is what's going on in the Somali community. We need to speak more about this. Uh, Barak Rafiq, um, bro, we need you more on the show, please, yeah? Um, uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, would love you to be on the show. Uh, mashallah. I think there's a lot of points you, uh, I agree with because if I look into my culture, we've been assimilated so much. I, I don't think, if you saw what the Turks are doing now, Aki, you would, you would say, alhamdulillah, we are doing very good. We're on the Salat al-Mustaqim, yeah? Uh, wallahi, let me tell you something. It's like a nightclub, now full out. Alcohol, music, the way they dress. My mom tells me, yeah, it's your auntie's wedding. I'm saying, mommy, I'm so sorry, I'm not going nowhere near that. Not in the vicinity. If it's there, I'm going around the block, yeah? yeah? So it's, it's, okay, I see. And that is true, that's a lot of uh, people are, sadly, like you said, people just, I feel sometimes the marriage is the, the, the wedding. And that's where they, they, they get divorced. I've heard of stories where, like, because their focal point is what? Big wedding, da da da, hoo ha. And then when they get into the actual marriage, they're like, oh, this is boring. But so you said, sister, the first thing was that dress, and then um, uh, they wear something else. So why do they do three types of clothing? Is it just like. It's just, it's just part of the, uh, the wedding. So it's just, just mm. part of Somali wedding. It, it, again, it's, mm. it's dependent upon the woman. Sometimes you may just opt mm. for one dress. Mm. It, it depends on uh, who she is, right? Yeah, okay, so what about the, and the North? Religiously as well. It depends yeah. if she's religious, if, yeah. if she comes from a really religious family, or mm. if it's more culturally. You know, she's so you're actually, from the North, sister. Yeah. So you said, is it similar? I think so. It must be very similar. Sounds, I don't think that's the difference. It's not that different. What's it's not different? Because I. It's, it, there's just I don't know what they traditionally traditionally do back um, home yeah. in the UK. Like in when I UK. got married, mm. I, I mean, like I wasn't even there for when the guy the came. Nikah, yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, I was at yeah. work actually. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So they gave me away without me being there. Yeah. So. I but you, 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 but, but, but you, you was slightly. Yeah. I mean, you're not supposed to be there. That's what they say. Ah. Yeah. See, good. Okay. So you're not supposed to be there. I mean. It, it depends. It mm. depends, really. Everyone, I don't know. But you was obviously you wanted to marry the guy. But your father yeah. was yeah. there. Right? Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, just, just, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, can I ask? You know, when you do the wedding, is it like one wedding, one time, and free dresses, halas? Yeah, yeah. Or is it before you have to do this? Like we it have depends. the we have the henna. Do you guys have like this henna night? No, you don't. No, I don't. I think don't know. Henna I don't know. But basic. Well, if you're if you're in the West, I think. Probably, yeah. yeah well, well, no, 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 traditionally. I want to talk, it's like, uh, we don't uh, have so much, henna nights. Uh, no henna nights. So yeah. it's just one really? wedding, oh, free dresses. Okay. The men just eat, the, 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 the Somali henna. sisters, they just do have a little party for the sisters. Yeah, yeah, we have we have that. And then towards the end, we have something called Shashtar, I think you know. So this is basically mm. uh, when, you know, married women, although again, some women don't do this, but married women go around the, um, the bride and they basically put on different colored silk uh, scarves on oh, her, okay. so almost like wood off uh, any sort of like evil eye or you know divorce or whatever. But then again, for religious reasons, yeah, it's not yeah. Some but, but it's done. Yeah, okay, but that's it's part of culture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, have you been to any Somali weddings? Yeah, I've been to different ones, like mixed ones, and then also separate. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really know too much about yeah. how it works. Everyone's got mm. a different process. Mm. Um, you do get like uh, what she's saying. It does happen. Mm. Um, and then you get like mixed ones, a lot more modern. Nowadays yeah. people are following like modern trends and like not Islamic stuff. Mm. Uh, Cause yeah, they're just following like Western world basically. So yeah. Okay, good. All right. I think, is there anything else we can add in this? Oh, yeah. thing? The We're last part. Yep, please. T it's called the Tadoba, right? Okay. So this is the seven day period, the honeymoon, traditionally speaking, yep. where the woman and the husband don't really leave their bedroom. Right, so they don't leave their home. So the food is brought to them. They don't oh, do anything. Wow. So this is the honeymoon period. Traditionally, traditionally speaking, mm. to the so the whole seven day dedicated. So the food is brought to them, they catered yeah, for. Yeah, so dedicated for them to get to know each other, sort of like bond and so on and so forth. Mm. So that's their honeymoon. Wow. Yeah. Very, very that's a very interesting take because I think there's a hadith of the Prophet but that's so pertaining to if you marry a virgin girl that you should spend an X amount. I can't remember the days if there's anyone that remembers. I don't know if it was seven. But uh, okay, uh, so interesting. Okay, now moving on to um, how does the Somali culture, the community, deal with when it comes to marital disputes? So if there's a marital dispute between the husband and the wife, mm. how do you guys deal with it? Is it like, for example, what I heard was that basically it's more like um, they they tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, they usually say, okay, it's your family, we stay away. Like like 
I don't know if it's correct. No. Like we, we will only get involved, but it's more like it's a husband and wife. They don't, uh, something like this, but please correct me. I don't know. I, I'm absolutely ignorant about um, this. Are you going to say? Short. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mar marital disputes and stuff like that. Usually it's the elders, yeah, I mean, the elders, the aunties who, yeah, I mean, and religious authorities who facilitate this process. They take care of it. They, uh, they are the ones who usually make sure that, hey, everything is all right here. Everything is good. So, I mean, it's, it's the elders who take care of it when it comes to marital di disputes, usually. Because we as Somalis, since we were young, we were taught you need to respect the elders. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how educated you are. Your, the elders have an important voice. Listen to what they say when it comes to marital dispute. So that's it. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so you said basically the elder, the elder get involved? The elders get involved, yeah. The, the aunties, the leaders. The dad, the, the mom, the dad will, yeah. yeah. So if there is an issue mm. between the husband and wife, the, 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 traditionally the man will come, the father of the girl would come and the same for his family. So they will get together. So people that he trusts in mm. his family, mm. people that she trusts from her family, they come together. They are also present. They both present their cases and will say what their issues are and then they try and resolve it. Okay, um, just curious. If um, the Somali uh, boy, he comes and says, you know, I'm not happy with my wife. What would the parents be like? What do you think culturally the aspect is like? Is it more like, listen, um, be quiet, or you know what? Like, is, it, is it like something where they're like, listen, go back to your house? What happens? Because some cultures can be like very toxic in that element. Where it's, do you get what I'm trying to say? So how do you guys like deal with the initial state? Imagine the daughter comes home and she's complaining about her husband. Mm. Do the parents absorb it, listen? Or is it more like, listen, your husband... Like, I don't know. I'm just, it's just. It depends on which family, but mm. culturally, I think they try as much as they can to try and push them together. Like so, traditionally, our culture is not one that takes marriage like lightly. Mm. Like we 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 do respect and put such high value mm. in um, marriage. So we do try and um, you know calm the woman down, try and make her see sense, and vice versa to the man. So yeah, we do. We, our culture doesn't see marriage as. Mm like a very light thing. So if he says that he wants to divorce her, mm. they'll tell him, calm down, you know, think mm. about this. Are you sure? So that we'll, we'll try. I think, you know, that's mm. how we see marriage. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree as well. Uh, I think as much as we're lenient with divorce in comparison to other communities, we're also frowned upon it as well, especially um, when it comes to divorced women. So we try to, as much as we can, you know, come out with solutions, typically speaking as the elders of the family, uh, the, you know, the female or the male relatives, whatever it may be, whatever we can do to sort out and bring up solutions. Okay, interesting. I, I did hear, like, for example, they, they do really like, which one thing, another thing that I really like about the Somali uh, community the culture is that they do really push you to like, listen, work in your house, work in your yes, house. Yes. You know, there is not like, yeah, come, or he's done this, etc. let's break the, do you get it? Uh, I, I feel like, um, they do, they do really um, like push that. I haven't, I, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't personally heard um, of any like, I don't know, like, oh, the girl usually goes to her mom and her mom just like brainwashes her. That, that doesn't happen, right? It does depend on like- Yeah, so of course, with every, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but generally I've heard that they are very like, keep your marriage, yes. save your marriage. Yeah. More so towards the women though. So ah. it's like, if it's a woman, it's like, you know, keep your husband, keep your, you know, keep your house all together. I think a lot of the, um, keeping the marriage together is, most of the times it's placed upon the woman, right? Mm -hmm. So that responsibility sometimes is placed upon the woman. She's told, oh, make sure, you know, you know, be patient on your husband, you know, regardless of what he does. That same mm -hmm. level of yeah. um, sort of advice. It's not given to the men. It's not really given to the men. And we talked about this, isn't it? Like, yeah, earlier we, know, we, talked, earlier about we it, talked about yeah. it. About, and um, yeah, and you know what? Sometimes it can lead sometimes the, the sisters to uh, feminism. Yeah. Uh, sadly, because we have, I, I have sometimes seen it where, you know, it happens with all, all kinds of women happen, etc. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a phenomenon where they end up being like, you know what, we're not getting our rights here. And it's sad because it's not it's not really Islam. Both yeah. advice should be given both yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, anything else you want to add, Aki? No? Yeah? Okay. Uh, next question is basically, okay, when it comes to um, divorce. So this like, you know what, look, they've talked, they've spoken, da, 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 etc. whatever. They're like, you know what? We don't, we, how does the procedure start? So they're like, you know what? 
I'm not happy with this woman, or I'm not happy with him. Yeah, uh, I want divorce. Is there a last resort of, look, let's have a meeting, let's get the families come together. And when it's decided like, okay, look, khalas, I want divorce. How does that process start? With kids and without kids. So imagine the sister hasn't got kids. They haven't mm, got kids. Yeah. But imagine they also have kids. So you're at the divorcing stage. Yeah. How does the community in a nutshell deal with it? Yeah, I mean, in a Somali society, when it comes to divorce, divorce is regarded as a last resort, yeah? And it's approached with a lot of caution due to the emphasis of keeping the marital bond together, yeah? But when a couple decides to pursue a divorce, usually, as I said before, the elders, the leaders in the community, religi religious authorities facilitate the process, yeah? And one thing I need to yani, bring in is, I do think that a lot of divorces happen for yani, trivial, yani, daif, pointless, useless yeah. reasons, yeah. yeah? For example, a woman can say, hey, he used to take me out two times a week, now only two times a month. I feel like the friendship is growing apart. I don't feel the bond anymore. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm gonna divorce him, yeah? So these daif reasons, they happen. Of course, sometimes, yeah? It can happen because of uh, brutal problems, mm -hmm. abuse, etc conflicts mm -hmm. but usually it's these yani, daif, useless reasons mm -hmm. so yani, that's my thoughts on it okay Adi. can i just can i just say something yes. um i mean I, I keep hearing um that the somali community has a high rate of divorces i think um, everyone's had a cross culture yeah i think it's everyone's but can i give my take why i think that is mm. like i feel like traditionally like back home in somalia somaliland wherever mm. um women didn't have as many rights as they do in the uk mm. this is my take right um women didn't have as much rights as um they they, they do here therefore they used to put up with a lot more um you know things from men that they probably 90% of the time won't put up with from men. And I'm, I'm really sorry to tell you, Mohammed, but that's not the reason why women get divorced because of silly little things. It's often like major things that men are not fulfilling. Like there's a traditional saying like in Somali where um, yes, we know yes. that, we know that per that proverb, that yeah. like marry her with lie, like lie Lower to her. her in with lies, yeah. yeah, like promise her the world, lie to her, lie to her. And then yeah. when you actually get married to her mm. and you've got her, mm. now present your truth. Yeah. Isn't that the woman it's, who does that? What the kul kul kul? The one who says hit the road, the one she 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 she, she <laughs> yeah I heard it. She, the one who says that basically you lied to me and this time yeah now you hit the road. yeah I heard 100%. that there, so. and that's yeah. what a lot of Somali men tend to do and that's I, it's a pro it's a proverb for a reason. Okay, I just want to say something. We have a whole topic on why marriages are breaking down. Yeah. Um, I think this issue is not a Somali issue. Yeah, it's yeah, a it's everyone, right. everybody's going through it. Yeah, so we're going to discuss that in the why a marriage is breaking down. If you're going to be there for that, yeah. it'll be good to have your take on it. Yeah. But in general, I just want to know. Just going back to topic. Um, how do you guys deal with uh, divorce in the sense where family just gets involved and if the girl is adamant, is there more pressure put on the girl to stay or the boy to stay? Can I just, yeah, okay. Like, uh, if what you know, if there's, yeah. I would say, like, personally, I don't like know anybody like, close that's had a divorce, so like, I'm family, family, like, nobody. Mm -hmm. But from like, uh, like distant relatives, I've seen like, for example, my dad would go to um, try and resolve issues with like the, the husband and the wife. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, yeah, definitely it is frowned upon to have a divorce. It's not good. Um, and yeah, like, it, it, personally, I don't know, I don't know too much about this mm -hmm. like, because I'm not seeing it like around me. Like mm. my oldest brother, um, basically he's, he's got a mental health condition. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he did have a divorce, but it was more so just non-compatibility. It wasn't really, mm. um, yeah, okay. but I haven't had like I'm not like people around me that are like that had divorces that are mm. like normal okay. couples. Basically. So if you guys have heard of any divorce in your in, in the community, which one's got more emphasis on the woman to stay or the man to stay? Like, w w do they say to the woman, "Ah, oh, you know, put up with him," or do they? Because probably more are they are they the fair? Women. Are they like? I think more with the women. I think they try and push. I mean, they mm. try and always push the woman to stay. Mm. Um, I think that's the age. Yeah, but age, ultimately, yeah. is you know, it's the man that gives a talaq, isn't it? Mm. So. If he doesn't, and you know, there are times where the man doesn't want to give the talaq and the woman demands it and yet she doesn't get it. So it just, yeah, yeah. they do encourage the women more, more pressure. Yeah. yeah, the responsibility, like I said earlier, mm. is like solely placed upon the woman. Even if her mental health is deteriorating, mm. 
and she's like going through it. Mm. Perhaps maybe he got a second wife and he's not providing for her. Mm. You know, maybe he's, you know, subhanAllah, maybe he's abusing her, whatever the case might be, right? Mm. She's told, you know, just keep her husband, put up with it. You know, this mm. is what you're supposed to do as a wife. Mm. You know, this is our culture. It will get better. It will get better in time. Just mm. go back to your husband, you know? I think that's why you see that with the Asian culture as in well. In many cultures, yeah. You see it in many mm. cultures as well. But then again, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's not it's not it's necessary from Islam, especially if the man is not doing his rights. Um, you know, if he's not even providing basic, I don't know why these why yeah, these why yeah, these brothers yeah. even think about second wife. Uh, it's it's allowed, don't get it twisted. I'm I'm I full out say it. You know, we are as men we are polygamous by nature. 100 billion percent. I don't care anybody that comes to me. I'll challenge no, I anybody. We, yeah. we, we are 100%. Uh, yeah. Anybody that disagrees, well, I, no problem. I, I'm willing to do light detector test uh, for <laughs> anybody. I'm ready to go for it. I'll put my uh, neck on the line. Every man is polygamous by nature. Every single man. So to me, the issue is, I'm just talking about the men who do not provide and violate their wife's right. I believe they shouldn't be talking about this yeah. because mm. you're not even giving the basic hug of your first wife. Yeah. Is she even happy with you? Actually, I don't even recommend it. Me personally, I wouldn't even recommend it to a individuals, if a brother comes to me and says, I want a second wife, and I'm like, listen, how's your relationship with your first wife? Bad? Bro, shh, please, man, don't fix that. Once that is on check, what I mean is your relationship, the way you've done, nahris that you have towards one another. Sorry, I've got this, I'm learning here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, these things that you have, is it eh, eh, Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm, inshallah. How do you know yeah, these words? I, I know, alhamdulillah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't, I've got so many brothers and all my teachers, alhamdulillah. So the thing is um, that you need to have that. If you're not, then you're basically causing problems, you know? Mm. Of course, the first wife's never gonna be happy if you get married again, that's a different issue. But at least if you have that nice balance of relationship, if she knows you're a good man, mm. you know, she, she, I believe if Allah's legislated polygamy, she's, Allah's created you in a way where you can deal with it. Mm. It is bad, but you'll deal with it. Just mm. the way I have to deal when I go to war, innit? When we go to war, we have to deal with it as well. Yeah, but how often do you go to war? But the thing is, if we do, we end up dying and coming back and now our wives will get married to somebody else. Yeah. So the issue is, our one is actually greater because if you think about a sister, off topic, I'm so sorry. So I'm, I'm a passionate, uh, mm. you know, when it comes to this, I'll go on a mad one. When it comes to this issue, you share a husband. When I go and die, I leave an inheritance, which my wife will enjoy with a new husband. Yeah, which one is worse? Yeah, me but you're talking my on a rare case. That's very no, 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 not necessarily. It's See, that's not often. Sister, but and, and polygamy man's... happens often. Okay, yes, it is. But you know why, sister? And I say this. You know what I say, yeah? And I know it's to off topic, yeah? I say this to every sister. Any sister that comes to me and says, my husband is getting a second wife. I ask simple, basic questions. Sister, this husband of yours, does he pray salam? Yes. Does he fast? Yes. Does he give his zakah? Good. Is he good to you? Good, Yeah. Okay, does he feel Allah good? Have you ever caught him talking to girls behind your back or no, no, none of that? Generally good guy, yes, loving, provides, loves the kids. I would say you are out of your mind yeah. to end that marriage because he's getting a second wife. Because you know why? The problem is not going to run away. The next man you marry, is, it's going to come in different forms. Either he's going to be doing it in a haram way, either he's going to do it secret, or he's going to do it openly. And I honor the man who does it openly rather than secretly. But what I'm seeing his sister is that wallahi al-adheem. Every single man has is polygamous. Bring me look. I, I, if you want, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a test. But do but do you agree that some men prefer just that they they they, they do say that it's ha it's a headache having two wives or three wives. Some men do actually just want one. Okay, sister. That's no, okay. no, 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 sister. The moment they say it's a headache, where do you think that headache is stemming from? The first wife. The no, moment a man says. Enough. It's a headache, you know what he's saying? Not the headache that if I have two wives, the headache my first wife's gonna cause me. Because they're, be, they're not saying I'm happy with my first wife, they're saying it's the headache, yeah? Okay, but yeah, Ali, my, my brother. Are... I know it, brother, I know. <laughs> no, but sorry. Ali, but it's yes. okay to have, like if a man has one wife, he, there is, you, do you know men that have just one wife and that are happy? Let me, tell, let me tell you something, yeah? Shall I be, shall I be honest with you, sister? Yeah, yeah? go on. Wallahi ladin. I deal with these cases in the sense where I speak to general, I speak to Jahan people, I speak to people who are God, God conscious, I speak to semi-practicing people, I speak to people who do the basic. I see one thing in common. All of them. How many men are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I dare anybody, and Sister Amir's husband's here as well, yeah? Unless you've got uh, gun to gun to his head. Wallahi, I'm telling you, every single man in here is polygamous. Every single man. Now, the man, if if he, the only reason why he would, argument's sake, would not be looking for that, like you said, the headache. Number two, for example, in this country. Could he just be satisfied do, with do, one woman? Shall I tell you something? Wallahi, uqsum billah, I'll take it off by Allah. There is not a single man that could be happy with marrying one woman all his life. <laughs> <laughs> <Void>. <laughs> You're really angering me. Okay, 
okay, okay. No, see, but the topic, just come back. This is a different issue. I'm, I'm a bit, Sorry, okay. I just had to do that for No, no, it's fine. Do you want it one and a half minute? Or like? No, no, no. Okay. I just, I but, just but, yeah, yeah. But my dear sister, do you know why I emphasize on this topic? Yeah. Some people think I emphasize on this topic because it's a brother's thing and, you know, we've got the brother's mm. side. One of the main reasons I emphasize on this topic is the following, yeah? Because sisters are living in Disneyland. They, no, let me tell you why. They think this Romeo Juliet. Look, What's Romeo wrong Juliet. With that? No, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a dream. <laughs> because it's, you like, guys not, can't fulfill like, it. Is that not, what it is? Yes. So what I'm seeing is this, sister, yeah? Me, look, any man that, for example, it's as good as me saying, or all of these brothers here, yeah, most of them are married, yeah? It's yeah. as good as us saying, I'm going to divorce my wife because she nags a lot. Brother, the next woman you're going to marry is going to nag a lot. Mm. And the next one that you're going to marry is going to nag a lot. Am I running away from the problem? No, it's just coming in a different form. Maybe she would have a worse habit than my wife, plus the nagging argument's sake, yeah? And not that I'm saying my wife has that. May Allah bless and preserve her. You know, she's an amazing woman, alhamdulillah, yeah? And okay. now, the point I'm saying is this, though. When the sisters think that he's polygamous, I'm going to leave and find another man he's not. You are dreaming. That man either marries somebody who's in his 50s. I'll say, you know what? Yeah, now he's calmed down a bit. You know, his drive is calmed down a bit. Maybe. But if you are going to marry somebody in their 30s, I'm telling you, that man, if you ask them, I'm totally okay, darling. Yeah? I'm going to look at the camera. If you sisters went to your husband and said, I have zero problem. And they're going to look at you thinking, is she, is she testing me? And his head's going to be like, is this, guy, is this woman testing me? And, they, and you're like, no, listen. And you say, wallahi, you take the Quran and go, wallahi, I have no problem. You know what you say? Okay, are you picking her or should I find her? That's what would happen. You say, are you going to find her or should I find her? Simple. You know why? Because it's in our blood, it's in our DNA. So I tell sisters, do not destroy your marriages. And I know polygamy is like in the Somali community, like, alhamdulillah, it is, it's alhamdulillah, it's strife. It is strife. And may Allah bless the Somali back brothers. Home, yeah. As long as, no, 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 as long as they are just, no, no, as long as they are just, I'm so sorry, I'm going on a tangent. The, 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 as long as they are just, I'm talking about this very specific, God-fearing man who takes care of his wife, who loves his wife, who looks after her, not abusing her, not making her go do the shopping. La, 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 la. I'm talking about a decent man of taqwa who cares and loves his wife, who is there for his wife. He's there for his kids. Do not divorce this man because you are not running away from the problem. Yeah. Mm. Ali, can I just add? Sorry. Is there something. like a condition to yeah. men? Because I find that often men that are actually not even provided for or doing well by yes. the first yeah. or doing right by yeah. the first wife yeah. are getting married left, right and center. Uh, okay. So, so I would say, sister, the moment you violate the rights, look, a woman in Islam has rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, the, given her rights that the Western women were fighting 100 years ago to get. Do you know in the in UK, in this country, a man could go and sell his wife in the market. Do you know that? Yeah. He could have taken easy. He could mm. have, in the UK. There was a right that he can take his wife and say, you know what, I'll debt to next man. I need, mm. I'm going to sell my wife. It, did, did this happen in Islam? Never. No. So in Islam, if a woman is, and by the way, again, I need to repeat that. I'm, uh, just so they say two types of people don't learn. The one who's shy and the one who's arrogant. That's why I mentioned this. So we're all adults here as well. If a woman is not sexually satisfied, she has a right to divorce. If she comes and says, I am not satisfied from this man. Salamu alaikum. That man can't cry because it's her haq. So it's very, so people don't know this. And I think if I'm not mistaken, a woman came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, complaining about this. Sorry. So the Prophet didn't say, how dare you, you immodest woman. Mm. La, brother, this is Islam. This is not your dead culture, bro. Salamu alaikum. Yeah, whatever it is, yeah. yeah. Whatever culture you're from. Islam says she has her haq. If she realizes, hold on a second, this man doesn't provide for me. He doesn't even intimately please me, he's one against his second wife. Salaamu Alaikum, Ya Allah, was it? Watakakul Gurgul, yeah? <laughs> Hit the wrong yes. brother, Ya Allah, Salaamu Alaikum, yeah? Sorry, let's uh, come back to this topic, yeah? Now, the final topic is the following. Uh, when it comes to interracial marriages, I know there's this tribal issue, yeah? We're gonna talk, we've got a whole episode on interracial uh, marriages as well, yeah? Uh, we're gonna do, but just in a nutshell, with the Somali community, <clears throat> how do you guys deal with, for example, if there was a white brother who's a revert, a, 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 a Nigerian brother, a Jamaican brother, or a, a white sister, Nigerian sister, how do you guys deal with it? Or is it, how is it, is it frowned upon? Is it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, on this issue for me, it's like, um, how can I say? First and foremost, interracial marriage is allowed. It's halal in Islam, yeah? And yeah, I mean, it's highly celebrated, it's happening, right? Yeah. But my thing is this, understand this thing, yeah? If you want to go all out Romeo and Juliet, yeah, what do I mean? Do not listen to your parents, go outside of your ethnicity. I mean, there will be some issues. Your grandma's type of food, your mother's type of food, that type of food will no longer be served, yeah? 
language barrier. Yeah. Say goodbye to all of these يعني, smooth conversations. It's all about misunderstanding now. I mean, are we going to pretend yeah, that you're going to understand your in-laws inside jokes? Yeah. My brother, Google Translate will become your best friend. Yeah. So in a nutshell, my thing is this. If you want to go all out interracial, it's halal. Yes. However, it will come with a lot of love, laughter. Yeah. Hard times, miscommunication. So يعني, it's up to you. In the Somali community, we usually stick to ourselves. Yeah. يعني, we, we are very homogeneous. There is a saying, يعني, when you see a Somali, you know he's a Somali or she's a Somali. There is a distinct look, yeah, the phenotype. So the thing is, yeah, we like to stick together, يعني, marry each other. So يعني, that's basically it. Okay. Yeah, can I just yeah. say, yes. um, I think it's interesting that you have this approach now. I came across a video uh, of you, right, where you was talking about um, interracial marriage in such a degrading and denigrating manner, in particular towards those who are of the black race that you keep referring to as Jereher, right? So there's a lot of anti-blackness that exists within the Somali culture. I think we know that, right? And you kept on mentioning, there's a video that I saw of you on my FYP, Unfortunately, I, <clears throat> I don't know how I came he across it. He says a lot more than that. I don't yeah. know why he's been but, like let me, finish, let, me, let me just quickly say, um, there's, in that video, you were saying, I would never let my daughter marry a Jirer. You know, Jirer this, you know? So it's interesting how you suddenly now have a different approach or very much, oh, Islam, you know, accepts it. But you weren't saying that in your video. And you first know? and foremost, I don't have a different approach. That particular video was a comeback or a reaction video back to a man, yeah? A man, a Jirer man who said, I will never let my daughter touch a Somali, yeah? These pirates, banana eating, big foreheads, that yeah? Wasn't true. I'll never let my daughter touch one of these. So, what, do, what did I do? I did a comeback video. That's basically it. No. Okay, so, so okay, if, if, if you, if you, okay. If, if you, obviously, um, he's saying that he came from the angle, which is like, um, that they were being racist towards the Somalis. Yes. Uh, I, 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 that's, that's what he said. Yes. Uh, he has a right to defend himself in that sense. Um, but let's just, I understand mm -hmm. your concerns. I understand, yeah. I'm not gonna stop you. But let's just, you know, just go back to like the Somali community when it comes to tribalism. I think there's strong tribalism, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and by the way, we'll touch upon this just so it's because you asked as well, sister. Uh, maybe why don't you ask about myself and this whole Somali thing that's happening? Okay, so right? this is for yeah. all of the Somali community. Um, I've let them know that I was coming on and yes. they wanted to know and yes. they believe that you yes. have something against the Somali community in yes. particular, the Somali women. So okay. can you answer this, Ali? Because yeah. this is literally what they want to know. Yeah, to be honest, I can give an answer that will shut everyone up, but I'm just going to go with the uh, option B. The option B is basically that there's this, uh, basically, I don't know if you guys know my marriage documentary. Have you heard of it? No. Okay, so marriage documentary is my marriage, my journey as an Orthodox Muslim to finding my wife. So it's my journey and I documented it. This is what I went through, this is what happened, this is the good times, this is the bad times, when I was broke, this da, 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 da. So I'm just talking about ups and downs and telling people how to go about it and the lesson, life lessons they can learn from what I've learned. So in that very instance, the, docu the documentary we've turned into a kind of a docudrama. So it means we have certain actors on real life situations that happened. So what we did is uh, we had a Somali uncle. Now this Somali uncle was representing a real story that happened to me. Mm. There was a Somali sister I was getting to know for marriage. Very early on when I first came to Islam, it was in a haram relationship, nothing like that. It was someone that I had interest in. She had interested in myself as well. So there's this perception as if I liked her, she didn't like me, and I'm hurt about it. And I'm like, oh no, I need to take care of the Somali community, which I don't know where the hell that came from. Number one, in Islam, the, 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 to even bring it together that I have an issue with the Somalis is, is preposterous because my Quran teachers, and yes, it's the Somali, like, oh, my friend is black. But it's the how, like, not only that, it's, I'm not racist. The point is the following. We done a part, which was a short trailer, which is the Somali uncle shouting at me and saying, stay away from my niece. Now this is what really happened. But what I'm doing is I'm reenacting a certain scene. This happened to me with the Eritreans. There was an Eritrean sister I was getting off a marriage. The same thing happened. There was a Bengali sister I was getting off a marriage. The same thing happened. With the Pakistanis, it wasn't that bad, yeah? But I got racism left, right, center. This was with a specific Somali a sister that happened, she wanted to marry me and um, there was a proposal that we wanted to marry, but the uncle didn't want it. The uncle was just saying basically, he's Ajna Nabi, 
A Chinese, yeah. yeah. So basically, like he's not, I don't know what does a that foreigner. mean. Yeah, like he's, a foreigner. Like non savant Yeah, he's yeah. a foreigner, etc. And this, that, and look, at the end of the day, I've said to myself, we can go ahead with this, but I want, when you marry, you're marrying families. Exactly. I don't want your uncle, he's not happy, etc. So I cut it because to me, it was like, it's not. It starts it's, off really badly exactly. anyway, yeah. So that is where it's stemming from. And then there was a video about, I don't know if you heard, you know, Sheikh Said, Said the, the Somali. Yes, uh, yes. So he made a comment about the African Americans. Oh, we don't, they don't know who their fathers are. Mm. Then this African-American brother came out and said, oh, Somali girls in this that are doing, I would have been, I don't want to repeat it. Yeah. I've done a video where I'm quoting, but maybe it was my fault. Maybe I was quoting him saying, Somali girls are da 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 mm. I was defending, I was saying, how could you say this? this is slander. Yeah. So they were like, oh, why are you tightening like that? So from there onwards, you, there's this you perception. You a hate train. Yeah, it's, it's a perception, but it mainly comes from the non-practicing Somalis, mm. I've realized. And then I was trending on Twitter. People were like, Alhamdulillah, the uncle rejected you. Uh, they, <laughs> they dodged the bullet, etc. And I thought to myself, look, I understand. I never, ever offended. All I'm just saying is, this is a story that happened. I don't have animos animosity. It was just, this is what happened. Yeah. This is how I dealt with it. Yeah. And I moved on. Yeah. That was it. But that's where it's stemming from. I yeah. So see. other than that, wallahi, anyone that knows me, <clears throat> come on, man. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry, man. Like, who knows me? My favorite, come on, man. Somali, if you're all there, and he's, uh, was it? The gag. So um, you do, you do. Yes. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, no one, no one. against the Somali Anyone community. that says to me about issues Somalis is out of their mind. They should go, they, they should go to mental institute. I'm so sorry. It's, it's impossible. So that's where it stems from. Okay. Um, but going back to the topic of international marriages, tribalism, mm -hmm. um, is that rife? Like I've heard that you guys don't even marry from diff different tribes. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, the tribes are such a big issue in our community. I think it's it's utterly disgusting. I I like literally, we, you know, I think hopefully everyone on the panel um, is non qabilis We 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 don't like that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to move away from that. But there are people that are still very very strong mm. in in their qabil, and they were like, we're not going to marry this qabil. We're not going to marry that qabil. Why? So, are they like they think they're inferior. They think they're inferior. They're a lower. Yeah. Like, um, what do they say? What's that saying? Langab. La Langab, yeah. Lander. What's, what does that mean? Like, I'm actually trying to translate So that. Langab is basically like, a, it's like an Lower insult. Lower yeah, yeah, it's like a derogatory tribe. way of saying they're inferior to us, you know? Yeah. Langab is, يعني, your lineage is short. And basically, no, 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 that's but it's it. used oh. as an yeah. insult, it's a derogatory is term. But it's an insult, right? To call people. It's names. not a good word, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. It's not a good it's word. It's an insult. Like so, it. if you was argument saying, if you guys was to marry a, a, a non Somali, mm. How would the family, like, not, not you guys specifically, just how do they deal with, okay, this person, are they more like okay with the specific race? Like if it's a white reaver, are they okay with it? Or if it's like a, is it a Jamaican or black or I don't know, like, is, is, is it change or is it? Yeah. I mean, nowadays there are more and more Somali people, men and women, yeah. um, particularly now that we've got the, the world of TikTok, like yeah. it's so, I can see a lot mm -hmm. more and I think it's marriage. become it more acceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And parents, I've, I've spoken to like a few older parents and they've said, my daughter's got married to a, a black man and I'm, 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 as long as my daughter is happy mm. and, I, and, I, and I congratulate her because that ultimately that's all that matters at the end of the day, my, in my personal opinion, is, is this person going to look after your, your, your daughter or mm. you know, vice versa? Mm. Um, I think it's become a lot more accepting, mm. but yeah, certainly I think maybe some races they probably think is inferior, more inferior yeah, than so others. The race, so they're probably more accepting of a white man, perhaps yeah. in the okay. Somali community. Mm. Yeah. Um, someone maybe more closer to that has already mm. um, Islam in, like if if they're Muslim already. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. <clears throat> but anyways, okay, that's. It. I don't think there's anything else to be uh, add on. Is there anything that we need to know about the Somali culture? Anything that we've missed? Oh, Okay, that's interesting. A lot of people come and say, are Somalis black or not? <laughs> but they say, okay, 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 are Somalis black? Yani, what is black? Black is a term that wasn't made by black people. There's different types of blacks. There's loads of different types of blacks. Yeah, yani, me, I identify as Muslim, Somali. Yani, I can identify as African. Are you black? No. 
Okay, anyway, that's what we can say. We'll save that for another day. Anyways, guys, uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. May Allah bless you. Comes from all the way from Sweden. We need you more in the show, inshallah. And you, Barakah Fikaki. And sisters, thank you. May Allah bless you for your take, inshallah. Thank you. Uh, uh, guys, 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 one second. Uh, till next time, brothers and sisters, on the Bitter Trip Show. If you guys want, we want different coaches. We want Moroccans, Algerians, Turks, Kurds, uh, Nigerians, uh, Congolese, whatever. Please apply. And we would love to have you guys on the show and know about your culture like we did with our Somali brothers and sisters. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So guys, if you are somebody who trains like me when I'm doing boxing, when I'm jogging, when I'm doing bodybuilding, this can benefit you. It's Shilajit from Nature's Blends. As you guys know, I get my honey, my black seed oil, and many other supplements from them. It has 86 plus minerals, including zinc, magnesium, selenium, fulvic acid, 59%, fully lab tested, the highest in the market. Boost testosterone levels, boost energy levels, and safe for men and women. So check out Nature's Blends in the description box and enjoy it.